All right, so what's going on, guys? Uh, we're trying out a new camera. It's, it's kind of, um, I don't know, I'll do a video explaining it um, as to why I wanted it and what I got it for and what kind of camera it is. But we're trying out a new camera today. Um, see how that goes. I think I think it's okay. I had a few bugs when I first got it, but I had to get it worked out in the settings. Um, like I say, but we're going to try it today, see how it goes. Uh, what we're working on is a uh, 51 Chevy Bel Air. And I've, I've already got um, the the paint on the body here, and I'm working on the roof. Now I've got a um, that's a Wicked or Auto Barn Createx uh, Auto Barn Silver Siller, um, and we're going to be doing a lace candy uh, roof up on the top of that thing. This is why I've got my lace here. And then, um, but anyway, that's the silver the silver siller. Um, that they recommend you use with their candy paints and I have done some tests with it and I've shot it over other paints and I, I can't really notice a difference in it um, now I guess they they just recommend that but you could use whatever you know how paint companies are but we got just a piece of lace here and you can use whatever whatever kind you like um, this is just one that I bought that I, I kind of like the pattern on what you want to do is, is you want to get it laid on there in a way um, where it's going to leave a pattern that you like. And I'm just going to, to where it'll actually cover the whole roof too. Now, I'm not so much worried about like the um, like the front and the back too much because I am going to be putting a, a fade around there to make it to give it more depth, you know. If that makes sense to you. Now, um, you want to try to hold it once you get it where you want it as best you can and stretch it a little bit so that way it'll conform to the body that you want or to the to the body the way you want it to. And then um, I just got some to me a tape here. We can do the other side. Now, it didn't really, you can see that, that part there where it didn't really, didn't really suck down like I wanted it to. Um, you can see up and underneath of it there. So what I may try to do is just shift it around and see if I can actually get it to lay down. Now I've painted on this a few times. Um, this wet piece of lace here, so it is a little stiff, which could be the reason why it's not laying down. But um, because um, so that piece is going to have a fade around it and I can stick a piece of tape to it and just pull it down. And like that, it's not going to be up to where I'm painting anyway. But it pulls it out there a little bit. And you just have to keep adjusting, you know, till you get it the way you want it. Actually. I think that was my problem the whole time. So we can pull that off now. And I'm happy with that. I'm not worried about it coming down on here because this car, um, this car gets, um, when, you're, when your pyramidal pull goes on, you won't even be able to see those posts that cover the complete post up. So I'm not too much worried about that. Once you get it laid on there, hey, I like it. Um, it's time to choose a color that you want to use. And now I've been doing some testing with this, and you can use different colors, um, whatever you want. But for me, because I'm going to be using a blood red candy, um, it tends to 
if I use a light color, it'll turn it red. But if I use a dark, a dark color, it'll turn it black. Kind of no in between. So that's why the silver's there. The silver will be like a metallic red when I'm done. Um, and then whatever color I spray on top of this lace, uh, because I do like to do a light color and a dark color. And I have done a dark color, laid the lace, and sprayed the light color. And you get some nice effects with that, too. Um, for this one, I chose to do silver, the silver silver as a base. Then I'm going to do a black to fill in this here, um, just because it, it makes it pop and you'll be able to see it more when you use a light color and a dark color. Now, you can do any number of, co any combination you want to do. I mean, you can get, like I say, I've done it a few different ways, and I've got good effects with it every way. This is just the one I like for this build. Um, and this is just um, the one I'm going to be using. Um, it's just an over-reduced black. Um, just because you don't want to put a ton of paint on here, all you're trying to do is just shade um, shade the areas that's showing through on the lace. Um, you don't want to just lay on a bunch of paint. All you want to do is just fog it because this black's going to show up really well on this silver which is another reason why I chose to do it this way on this build so I can do this video give you an idea as to how it looks and like I say you can play around with it and figure out what you like um, how you want to do it now because this is over reduced um, and I am doing this video inside my paint booth but I don't have it on but um, just because I don't, it is kind of loud and I don't want it to come through on the video um, and this is just acrylic paint, so I'm not worried about stinking up the house or anything. Um, because that, but get back to where I was. Because this paint is over reduced, um, I'm only shooting about 10, about 10 psi on my airbrush. Again, I like to, I like to, and this is way over reduced even for me, but I do like my paint. Um, to be a little thinner than most, so I can spray it at lower pressures. We don't need much. Do a little test, make sure we're getting good spray of it. Now, like I said, you, you, you don't want to just lay it on, or you just want to kind of fog it on. Because all you're trying to do is bring out the effects of that lace. very easy to do and it's very easy to overdo now, I think that's good there um, so we'll give that a few minutes to dry and then we'll come back we'll take um, we'll take the lace off and then I'll show you the next step Now that it's had a few minutes of dry, um, we're just going to take the lace off. I'm going to give you a look at the effect, hopefully. It came out right. And show you what we're going for. It came out beautifully. I'm happy with that. I think I'll take it. I think by the time time I get my candy over it, it'll look nice. I'm just trying to take the tape off my lace here. <laughs> I 
I don't know, it doesn't sound right, but whatever. Um, now we're going to take our over-reduced black again, and we're going to come in and we're just going to add another dimension uh, right around the edge of this roof all the way around. We're just going to do like a simple fade uh, paint pattern on it. Very, again, very easily done, um, and it just adds um, so much to your paintwork. Brush kind of set here. Um, again, we're running between um, just running between five and ten psi. Not not a whole lot of pressure here. You don't you don't need a whole lot. But I'll try to get this in there as best I can. Now all I'm trying to do is, if you can see that, is I'm trying to follow my trim where my bar metal foil is going to go, and I want to go above that just a little because if you do it on the trim, then most of it's going to be hidden. So I like to do it. I like to try to follow it, and I do make it a little bigger, like I say, just because, um, just because most of it's going to be hidden. Uh, Environmental foil. It's okay to go a little wider with it. And this is just giving it a little bit of depth. Um, you know. Start off light and then I go darker as we go. All right, I think that's good there. So, what we're going to do is, I can give you a good look at that. You can see there where I've just sprayed it. Now, once the candy goes on over top of that, it's going to make it look like that's just deep, just deep down in the paint, which is the look we're going for. Um, now, I'll let that dry 
for a few minutes, and then I'll come back and we'll do the candy. I've got to get my airbrush clean and get set up for the candy. Now we're ready to spray our candy. Um, I just want to give you a look at the kind of candy I'm using. This is Auto Wire Colors from Createx, the Candy 2.0. Um, I've done some tests with this stuff, just on you know test bodies and stuff like that. Um, now you can spray this right out of the bottle, and it sprays really well. I, I must say, for right out of the bottle. Um, but when when I try a new paint, I want to adjust it to my liking. I don't want to just go off what they say or or what somebody else says. Now I'll, I'll ask people questions. I use it. Um, to see how they use it, what they might thin it with, or reduce it with, and stuff like that, and then, um, so I know kind of a ballpark range of where to start. Um, you know, like I say, I've done some tests, and, and they recommend, um, what is it, um, they recommend using the 4030 um, as a reducer, it's a, yeah, inner coat 4030. Now I use the high performance reducer from from um, Wicked Colors, and I, I get good results with it too. And I'm and I have talked to people, and they say you could use the the 4030, the inner coat, or the high performance reducer. I think it's W500 or something like that. Some numbers on it, and it has another number too. But I don't have it right here with me to tell you what the number. I think it's like 4012 or something like that. Um, I haven't thin reduced it with the inner coat. I've just used the W500 because that's what I had. And they recommend you thin this stuff 10 to 25 percent per volume um, with the 4030. Now I don't know if maybe the W500 or something is a thinner reducer, but I and I normally like my paints thin because I can shoot them um, at low pressure. Uh, but with this stuff, it's already pretty thin, and you can already shoot it pretty low. But uh, the test that I did right out of the bottle, it seemed like I wanted it to lay a little smoother. So I just reduced it, and I'm probably only reducing it about 5%, and maybe uh, maybe the, the high, the high performance has a, has a flow aid in it or something. I'm not sure, but it seems like it lays out a little bit better, and I'm, I'm happy with that. So I reduce it at about 5%. 5 um, and that's what I have here and that's what I'm going to be using today um, now this stuff is really good um, I've got a couple of different colors of it now um, that I am going to be doing some paint jobs with and playing with and stuff like that and I'm guessing um, I'm hoping they're the same consistency throughout which most of Createx and Auto Barn and Wicked Color from what I've seen is, is all pretty consistent stuff um, and, and you can mix one color the same as the next color, um, so I'm, I'm pretty sure the candies are the same. But I will be doing some testing on, on the other colors I have to see if they are exactly the same or not. Uh, and I will do a follow-up video on them to let you know my opinion on them. But right now, I'm, I'm really liking them. I, you know, I haven't used a lot of acrylic candies. I've used um, I've used one or two from from House of Color, and uh, the to me it clears. Uh, clear colors. I've used them as candies before, and then this one here. But I'm I'm really liking this one. I'm not saying it's the best out of all of them, but as far as um, as, as far as me as as me being able to adjust my painting style to it, um, I think it's the best out there. And what I mean by that is, is I could say that I spray this at you know 10 psi, reduce 5 percent. And then you would get it, and you would reduce yours 5%, try spraying it at 10 PSI, and you may think it's just garbage. I mean, that's the thing, is you, you need to adjust your paint to your painting style. Like, if you like your paint thicker and higher PSI, then, then try to try to find a, a paint that works well with the style of painting you like to do. Um, but, that's, that's enough of my rant. <laughs> Back to the project. Um... And I am spraying at about 10 psi again. Like I say, I like I like my paint thin and, and low pressure. Right now it's not because I was just cleaning it. But all right, I think 
that's good there. Give her a little shake. And you don't need much of this stuff. It seems to go go pretty long ways. Just spray, make sure she's working well. Let me go a little lower on the pressure. Maybe about like that'll be good. All right. And this this stuff here does have a little bit of a smell to it. I may actually uh, I may actually turn my booth on for this. I don't. It's it's. Not All right. Now we got our booth on. I hope it's not too loud for you guys. Hope y'all can still hear okay. Um, what I'm going to be doing is just basically just like you were, if you painted a roof or something, you just want to get a good even coat all over it. Um, now it's just stuff, I tend to go a little thinner at first, and then I'll come back over it and make it a little bit thicker. You'll see. Trying to build the color up to where you want it. And you can't overdo it with this stuff. I'm going to stop right there just because it is where I want it to be. Yeah, it's got a nice shine on it right now, but it won't be that way once it actually dries. Um, that's pretty much it. I think I'll give it a, a little while to, to dry. Alright, I still got my, my my spray booth on. Hopefully you can still hear me over it. I don't know how loud it is on camera. Um, but I will know after this video. Now this is the clear that I use. Uh, this is a Rust-Oleum lacquer. It's a high luster coating. Um, now, some of you know, and some of you may not know, but Rust-Oleum and Testers um, is one and the same, meaning they're the same company. Now, to me, this stuff um, sprays, well, not really sprays, it comes out a little thicker, or a little more because it's probably a bigger can, more pressure, stuff like that. But it acts a lot like the Testers wet look. Uh, which is why I use this stuff. Now, I, you know, Tester's Wet Look, I think it's like five, six bucks and you get, um, you get a can this size. You know, you can probably get, or I get one, I get one car out of a can like that. But this, um, it's like six, seven bucks and I can get um, two and a half, three cars out of it maybe. And I, I enjoy, I like this stuff. It, it lays down good, it polishes up good. Um, I am, now that I do have a spray booth, um, I am going to try to decant uh, some of this and spray it and see how it works that way. My guess is it'll probably work a little better because you get more control over it going on, how it lays on, um, and stuff like that. But I am going to give that a try now that we have a spray booth. Most of the time I, I had been just carrying my stuff outside and spraying it. And I probably still will if I use it out of a can. Um, just because I'm, I'm not real sure um, on the spray booth. Um, I, mean, I, I think it's okay and I'm, I'm pretty sure it's okay. But I'm, I'm not real sure I want to go just flooding it with a bunch of flammable uh, solvents just yet until it's tested and proven, you know. 
Um, but we'll get to that part. And this is part of it here. Like the roof, I'm not really spray like spraying a roof. I'm not really concerned about because you're not putting a lot through it. Um, but let's see. But I'm going to go ahead and spray this. I'm just going to do a quick coat. I'm just going to do one coat of it, um, just because I want to untape this and do all my foil work, <coughs> and then tape back up around my foil because um, I want to seal in my foil with this stuff, and it, it doesn't really hurt it that much when you seal it in with clear. I like I've cleared right over a bunch of foil work, and it, and it doesn't really dull it down. But it doesn't really make it any brighter either. It doesn't really change it at all, in my opinion. Um, so that's, that's just the way I do mine, and that's the way I'm going to do this one. But I'm just going to put one coat to seal this paint in, so that way nothing can really happen to it for right now. Good. Give you a look at it while it's still nice and wet and shiny. Now this is the first coat. Um, when this stuff dries, it'll go down on the first coat, and in the second coat, it'll brighten up more, and in the third coat, it'll get even brighter. And the more you put, the brighter it'll get, the shinier it'll get. And then when you come back and you pile it, it gives you. I usually put um, usually put three or four coats of this stuff on, so that gives me a good buffer. Of, uh, of polishing it out so that for now I can say we're going to let that let that set um, and dry and then we'll do our full work and then we'll tape up around our foil and seal the whole thing in that's it for now I uh, will talk to you guys later